In this video, we're going to look at how to control the playable director from a custom script. We're going to write a script called Timeline Controller and reference a playable director from the script. Additionally, we're going to look at how to control multiple playable director components from this script, as well as how to assign and change the timeline asset that we wish to be played. Let's suppose that in our game, when a player interacts with an item, such as a button or lever, we'd like a timeline asset to play. In this scene, we have a podium with a button. The game object for the podium has a box collider component attached, and an area has been defined in front of the podium as a trigger. We also have a script attached to the podium called button collider. This script detects if the player is in the area and will execute an event if they have pressed space on their keyboard. In our game, we want to write a custom script that tells the playable director to play the timeline sequence that is currently assigned onto this tank. Before we get started writing our script, we'll want to disable the play on awake feature of the playable director component. Now, let's create our script. Choose Create, C Sharp Script, and we'll name it Timeline Controller. To gain access to the Playable Director class, we need to add UnityEngine.Playables to our usings. Let's add a public reference to a Playable Director so that we can assign it in the inspector. Then, let's write a public method called play with a void return type that when invoked will play the currently assigned Playable Director. Back in Unity, let's attach this script to our game object and assign the playable director to play. We need to tell the timeline controller script to play. Keep in mind that in your own project, you can call this method however you choose. However, for this current game, we want the play method to be called when the player interacts with our button, so we'll call it from our interaction script. Now, when the player interacts with the button, the timeline plays. We have a second tank in our game that also has a playable director component and a timeline asset attached. If we assign this and interact with the podium, the timeline on the second tank plays instead. So now we've decided that we'd like both of these timeline assets to play. We could create a second button for the second tank, but we want both of these timelines to play at the same time without having to require additional input from the player. So instead, let's adjust our script to allow for multiple playable directors to be played at the same time. Let's head back to our timeline controller script. Let's make sure that we have system.collections.generic added so that we can access and use lists. Then, let's change from a single reference of a playable director component to a list of playable director components called playable directors and then update the code on our play method. We'll go through each of the playable directors in the list by using a for each loop, and for each playable director in the list, we'll play the current timeline on the director. Back in Unity, we can see that we can now assign as many playable director components to the script as we'd like. So if we now drag both tank objects into this list and play our game, we can see that when the player interacts with the button, both playable director components execute. Now let's suppose we have a number of different timeline assets on our game object that we'd like to control from our script. For instance, on this tank we have two timelines, one for it moving, and another for the tank spinning its turret around. When the player interacts with our podium, we'd like the tank to play a different sequence depending on which button they press. This script allows for two different inputs from the player, space and enter, and can execute different methods depending on which key is pressed. We need to edit our timeline controller script again to be able to control which timeline asset our playable director should play. To gain access to the timeline assets class, we need to add unityengine.timeline to our usings, and again, Let's make sure that we have system.collections.generic added. 
Then, let's create a public list of timeline assets that we can assign, called timelines. Now, we need to write a method to pick a timeline asset from this list and assign it to the playable director. Let's write a new method called play from timelines with an integer called index as the input parameter. This parameter will be used to reference the location of the timeline we'd like to play from our list of timeline assets. Then, let's create a temporary timeline asset called selected asset and assign it from the index location in our list of timeline assets. Finally, in this example, we're only going to be playing from one playable director component. So let's choose the topmost instance of the playable director in our list and assign our timeline asset to it and play it. Just to avoid any errors, we're also going to add a line to make sure that the number we're inputting is lower than the length of our list. and if it isn't, to automatically assign it to the index of the last item in the list. Now, back in Unity, let's assign the timeline assets from the project window into the script. Then, in the interaction script, let's assign the play from timelines method and select list index zero for our first input and then list index 1 for our second. Now, if we play and press enter first, our timeline asset will be sent to the playable director. Then, if we press space, the second timeline asset will play instead. As you can see, with a custom script and just a few lines of code, it's easy to control the playable director and your timeline sequences to customize how they're played in your project. To download the scripts used in this lesson, as well as more information on Timeline and more Unity tutorials, please follow the links below. Thanks for watching.